If you come across something you don't understand, the first thing you're likely to do is to log on to the internet and see if there's any information there that can help you. Archaeologists and historians don't have that option. If they find something they don't understand and their colleagues and peers are unable to help them, they're left with a mystery on their hands. We love those mysteries though, because they mean we can make fantastic videos like this one. When a beautiful bronze Greek warrior's helmet turned up on the seabed of Haifa Harbor in Israel a few years ago, it left archaeologists with two questions. How did it get there? And who did it belong to? The helmet, which is thought to be around 2,500 years old, is unlikely to have belonged to an average warrior. It's covered in detailed engravings of animals, so it's too ornate for that. Such is the elaborate nature of the decorations that it's considered to be among the most ornate pieces of ancient Greek armor ever found. And the current best guess is that it's a relic of the Persian Wars. It might have fallen overboard from a warship owned by the Greek fleet as they did battle with the Persians, who ruled Israel back then. The helmet appears to have been crafted from a single sheet of bronze using hammering and heating, which would have been a difficult and time-consuming job but meant it was lightweight enough to offer a warrior protection without weighing their head down excessively. It's now on display at Haifa's National Maritime Museum. At least the archaeologists who found that helmet in Israel knew what they were looking at. The archaeologists who found this unusual structure in Istanbul, Turkey in December 2018 had no idea what they'd found when they first uncovered it, and they still don't. Nothing like it has ever been found before, so they can't even give it a name. But the discovery of mass graves directly beneath it suggests that it might have had religious or ceremonial purposes. That idea is backed up by the fact that it's made from finely crafted marble blocks, which wouldn't have been wasted on an average construction project. Even giving the structure an approximate age is difficult. A collection of 2,700-year-old coins has been found in the same area, but the coins could have been minted long before the structure was built or could have just as easily been buried there much later. It's probably too big to be a temple, but as nothing that looks even remotely like this has ever been found before, nothing can be ruled out at this stage. Further excavation and exploratory work are ongoing, so hopefully that might eventually provide some answers. The idea that the devil once walked on the ground in the United States of America in ancient times is a little far-fetched, but try telling that to the natives of Manchester, Maine. As far as they're concerned, the so-called devil's footprint is a sure sign that something ungodly once existed here. The strange marking, which appears to have been scorched red, can be found in the stone fence on one of the region's cemeteries. Legend has it that the rock was found during a building project centuries ago, but couldn't be moved. So one of the construction workers offered to sell his soul to the devil if the rock could be moved. The following morning, the construction worker was missing, the rock had moved, and this footprint-like shape had been left on its side. Presumably, all of that happened before construction of the North Manchester Meeting House in 1793, which is still open as a church today. The devil's footprint faces the entrance to the church, which is a strange choice for a place of Christian worship. The strange mounds in the middle of Jerusalem have been hiding in plain sight for such a long time that nobody even gives them a second thought anymore. But they should. Somebody built these mounds out of stone and mud more than 2,500 years ago, and we have no idea why. The largest of them are enormous towering over modern six-story buildings, so they would have been colossal construction projects for their era. Archaeologists have dug into the mounds in the past, and although most of them appear to be empty, one of them was found to have been built around a 2,700-year-old storage facility full of jar handles, many of which are stamped with the sign of the Kingdom of Judah. Theoretically, that connects them with the First Temple period but we're at a loss to explain what their significance is. Without better explanations to call upon, some locals believe that the mounds were made by the Rephaim, who are described in the Old Testament as a race of giants who lived in Canaan. That seems unlikely to be true, 
And even if it were, what would the Giants have used these mounds for? In December 2020, the residents of an apartment block in Chongqing, southwest China, decided to clear out an overgrown vegetation patch at the rear of their building. When they did so, it became obvious that nobody had tended to the patch for a very long time. If they had, they'd already have known that the whole building is propped up against a colossal statue of Buddha, albeit one that's missing its head. Archaeologists are still assessing the site, but their early work suggests that the 30-foot-high statue is around 1,000 years old. One 60-year-old resident of the complex claims to remember seeing the statue when he was young, but he swears that it had a head back then, and he's at a loss to explain what might have happened to it. Another resident claims that there used to be a temple at the site before it was knocked down to make way for the apartments during the 1980s. But that isn't supported by any local records or evidence. Decapitating a statue to build an apartment complex would be viewed as an act of sacrilege, so perhaps that's why nobody was keen to make a permanent record of it. When archaeologists and historians are truly stuck and have nowhere left to turn, they sometimes ask the public for help. They did that in September 2018 when they found themselves unable to translate the inscriptions on the side of the so-called Magical Islamic Stone of Iraq. The artifact was discovered by a 19th century English explorer named Sir Richard Francis Burton in Mesopotamia and is said to have been carved out of a meteorite. Experts from the National History Museum of London, England believe it's more likely to have terrestrial origins and appears to be made of quartz. But they, like Burton, are unable to translate the sphere's markings. The language is believed to be Kufic, which would date the artifact to around the 8th century, but unlike other Kufic inscriptions, it's proved to be impossible to translate the text in a way that makes any coherent sense. That's led some to suggest that Burton might have made the markings himself. While he was a distinguished explorer and archaeologist, he was also a media-savvy showman so creating a mystery of this kind would have appealed to him. If that's true, he'd doubtless be very amused to discover that people are still mystified by it after all these years. Several years ago, the site of the former Greyfriars Church in Leicester, England, became world famous when the remains of King Richard III were discovered there. That isn't the only mystery connected to the area, though. A few years after the king was discovered, archaeologists found an unusual stone coffin. It took them a little while before they decided to open it and find out what was inside. But when they eventually did, they found that it contained yet another coffin. This smaller coffin was different from its outer shell in that it's made from lead, not stone. The stone coffin, which had a lid so heavy it took the strength of eight people to lift it, was made during the 14th century. The more ornate coffin inside, which has a crucifix engraved on the lid, could be from around the same era or might be considerably older. The foot of the coffin is damaged, which has led some experts to believe that it may have been dug up and then reburied inside the stone casket. That rather implies that the people of the time were afraid that whoever was inside it might escape and return to the land of the living. So they put another coffin around it as a failsafe. There's never a shortage of things for archaeologists to look at and discover in Peru. But this discovery from August 2019 is a little unusual even by Peruvian standards. It's a 3,800-year-old wall mural, and it's unlike anything that experts have seen in the area before. The mural and the wall it's carved upon were discovered inside an old ceremonial building at the archaeological site of Vichama, not far from the Peruvian capital city of Lima. What it depicts is open to interpretation, but most people who look at it see a toad with a smiling human face, reaching out toward a human head. Dr. Ruth Shady Solis, who's an expert in the customs of ancient Andean civilizations, believes that it represents the arrival of water on the land through rainfall. Toads apparently represented water to the ancient Andeans, and the human face is most likely a symbolic representation of the continuity of life. 
Close to the toad-like mural is a depiction of human heads surrounded by snakes, the meaning of which is less clear. Dr. Solis's best guess is that the murals were created during a time of drought and crisis in the area. The civilization that lived here appears to have declined around the time the murals were made, so the two things might be linked. The ancient history of the Philippines isn't well understood. The region is known to have existed in isolation from the rest of Southeast Asia for centuries in the distant past, and very few records from that time exist. From what we have, the most significant artifact is thought to be the Laguna Copper Plate, which was made a little over 1,000 years ago, but wasn't discovered until it turned up when the Lumbang River was dredged in 1987. The inscription, which is written in early Kawi script and appears to be incomplete, says Hail. In the Saki year 822, during the month of April, according to the astronomer, the fourth day of the dark half of the moon appears on Monday. Those words are nonsensical in isolation and perhaps could only be properly understood if another copper plate could be found. However, the fact that it's written in early Kawi script is significant. This style of writing originated in Java in Indonesia, and so if it was used in the Philippines during the 9th century, the people of the region might not actually have been as isolated from the wider world as we once imagined. If you lived in Lincoln in the United Kingdom, you'd have an appreciation and understanding for just how large the city's cathedral is. Perhaps it's the building's size that explains why it doesn't appear to have been fully explored yet. If it had, someone would surely have found this 400-year-old curiosity much sooner. It's a three-foot-tall wooden sculpture of a knight and might once have been part of a large clock. Nobody knows why it was taken down or hidden away, but it turned up during an audit of one of the cathedral's towers in July 2018. While its real name is unknown, it's been labeled as a clock jack and may have been attached to the clock in the cathedral's north vestibule. While the clock has been rebuilt, altered, and otherwise refurbished over the years, parts of it, including the canopy, have remained unchanged since the 1380s at the latest. It's doubtful that the clock jack is quite that old, though the style of its armor and the fact that the soldier appears to have a beard suggest that a date during the 16th century is more likely. People all over the world have been puzzling over and becoming frustrated by the Rubik's Cube for decades. But long before that, the people of ancient China presumably had their patience similarly tested by puzzle balls. These 14th century creations are definitely products of their time. They're made from ivory, which would be illegal today, the highly respected Ming Dynasty era scholar Cao Zhao owned several of the balls, despite the fact that he found them extremely difficult to solve, once describing them as the devil's work. Gung Zhao appears to have been a puzzle ball hotspot, as that's where the majority of the balls come from and where they continue to be made until the 19th century. Nobody can adequately explain how they were made, despite featuring an average 20 layers of ivory. They all appear to have been carved out of just one single piece. The puzzle is solved by aligning all the holes so it's possible to look straight through the center. But you'll probably never get the chance to try your hand at one. Those that still exist today tend to be kept behind glass cases in museums. Tentacle Castle in Cornwall, England, which is connected to the myth of King Arthur, is the most famous ancient structure in the country. It isn't the only one you'll find there, though. Just one mile away are the Rocky Valley Labyrinths, about which almost nothing is known. Mostly hidden by the ruins of a long-forgotten mill, these carved labyrinths have been here for thousands of years. Most archaeologists believe they were created during the Bronze Age, but their true origin is unknown, and they could easily be even older. Because of their hard-to-reach location, their existence went unnoticed until 1948, when they were seen from above by a passenger in a plane. The topic of their age is heavily disputed, as is the matter of what they're supposed to represent. Some people say that the design comes from ancient Celtic culture and is a symbol of fertility. Pagans claim the place is their own and visit it every year for rituals and ceremonies. 
There are even some rumors that they were created as a joke by bored mill workers during the 18th century. Although the amount of effort that would have gone into carving them makes that unlikely. Perhaps they'll always be a mystery. But that only serves to make them more interesting. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.